you want me to do? Dress and drag and do the hula? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're looking at parts of animated films that were reportedly spur-of-the-moment improvisations, unintentional slip-ups, or spontaneous exchanges that made the final cut because they were simply too awesome to leave out. Let your sword do the talking. I will. It will be loquacious to a fault. Number 30. Jane recites her wild encounter, Tarzan. Jane first meets Tarzan after some monkey business puts her in need of a rescue. Luckily, Tarzan swings in at the nick of time, and they bond up in the treetops. Later, back at the camp, Jane excitedly shares her adventure with her dad and Clayton. Suddenly, the monkey starts crying. Oh, when I turn around, and there's a whole fleet of them! What, what? There's an army of monkeys, what, 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 a huge monkeys? tree full of them, monkeys. screaming at me! Ooh, 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 ooh. Now that's uh, Therapeutica uh, 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 She's very good at this. Oh, really? Well, apparently, this bit of animation was led by Jane's voice actress, Minnie Driver. Reportedly, she went off script, waxing poetic about meeting the wild man. Suddenly, I was swinging in the vines, up in the air, with the monkey, swinging, yes. flying. I was in the in air. In the air, yes, I know. And they were surrounded. What did you do? And daddy, they took my boot. They took resulting in what then became a record-breaking feat for supervising animator Ken Duncan. It turned out to be one of the lengthiest scenes ever captured on film, taking a remarkable seven weeks to complete and consuming a whopping 73 feet of film. I was saved by a flying wild man in a loincloth. Loincloth? Good lord. What is she talking about? I had the foggiest idea. Takes after her mother, you know. <laughs> She'd come up with stories like that. Not about men in loan clubs, of course. But. Number 29. Achilles, Heel, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. This movie's writers crafted a script that was funny, heartwarming, and devastating all at once. Achilles, sit. Hey, whoa! Oh, dear, I'm sorry. Naughty horse. Naughty. He's just impossible, really. I can't take him anywhere. However, credit must also be given to Kevin Klein, the voice actor for Captain Phoebus, who delivers one of the film's wittiest gags. Do you remember the name of Phoebus's horse? It's Achilles, just in case you needed that refresher. Although apparently, it isn't the writers who named him. In fact, he may have remained nameless had Klein not ad-libbed this little joke. Come on, boy. Achilles, heel. <laughs> It might have sailed over your head as a kid unless you were super into Greek mythology or idiomatic expressions. It's so simple, yet so brilliant. Achilles, sit. <laughs> Number 28. Someone's Hungry, Billy and Mandy's Big Boogie Adventure. Have you ever been in the middle of a task that feels never-ending, especially as your growling stomach seems to get louder with every passing second? I'm not scared of rattlesnakes if they don't bite with me. Do you find yourself concocting sly ways to drop hints that it might be time for a food break? Well, apparently, that's what happened here to Billy's voice actor Richard Stephen Horvitz while they were recording the Scario song. As the song nears its end, Billy sings... As the story goes, this lyric wasn't actually scripted. After numerous takes, Horvitz's rumbling stomach prompted him to ad-lib the line. Some folks apparently excel at improvisation when they're running on empty. What is Billy doing? We need to get out of here. What do you mean, what am I doing? I'm singing. There's always songs in animated movies. Number 27. Keep an ear on Fred and an eye on Cass. Big Hero 6. Fred, voiced by T.J. Miller, steals the show in Big Hero 6 with his spontaneous and humorous antics. Can you feel it? You guys, do you feel this? Our origin story begins. We're gonna be superheroes! A big part of what makes the character such a crowd-pleaser is how Miller made up many of Fred's lines on the spot, inserting his own comedic style and charm. Six intrepid friends, led by Fred, their leader Fred, Fred's angels, mm -mm -mm. Fred's angels. Mm -mm. Similarly, Maya Rudolph brings Hero's Aunt Cass to life with her vibrant performance. Of course, Cass sounds great, but she also looks great in part thanks to Rudolph. For ten years, I have done the best I could to raise you. Have I been perfect? No! Do I know anything about children? No! Should I have picked up a book on parenting? 
The animators were able to watch footage of the actress while she was recording her lines, and infused Cass with her IRL expressions. The next time we watch the film, it's gonna be hard not to picture Rudolph in the studio when Cass appears on screen. Okay, special dinner tonight. I'll whip up some chicken wings, yeah. you know, with the hot sauce that makes our faces numb. Okay, sounds good. Right! Number 26, Raya's Prayer, Raya and the Last Dragon. It sounds like improv was encouraged on the set of Raya, and with Aquafina playing the titular dragon, how could it not be? I, I did do that, that's, that's true, but have you ever done like a group project, but there's like that one kid who didn't pitch in as much, but still ended up with the same grade? Yeah, I wasn't the one who actually made the gem, I just turned it in. She brought her quick wit and high energy to Sisu, a character who was actually written with the actress in mind. Kelly Marie Tran, who voices Raya, also got in on the ad-libbing action. I don't know if you're listening. I've searched every river to find you. And now I'm here at the very last one. Tran shared that, during Raya's prayer to Sisu, she veered off script, tapping instead into her own experiences with feelings of hopelessness and desperation. These genuine emotions really struck a chord, making Raya's sadness feel incredibly real. Sisu told you. I just really, really want my bot back. Please. Number 25, Judy Cries, Zootopia. In this animal-inhabited world, Judy Hopps, a rabbit cop, joins forces with Nick Wilde, a grifter fox. Their first encounter at an ice cream parlor sees Judy outfoxed by Wilde's quick wit, thanks to some improvisation by actor Jason Bateman. My boy, this goofy little stinker, he loves all things elephant, wants to be one when he grows up. <coughs> Is that adorable? Oh. Who the heck am I to crush his little dreams, huh? What made the final cut is one take of several that were done in the booth. If you want to see what could have been, check out the longer deleted scene. He thinks he's an elephant. <coughs> Do not smirk, please. He has lived with this affliction his entire life. Every day is a battle. Buddy, give us a little toot. <coughs> Jennifer Goodwin, who voices Judy, did some impromptu theatrics of her own, too. I was ignorant and irresponsible and small-minded. But predators shouldn't suffer because of my mistakes. I have to fix this. It comes in the scene where Judy tearfully apologizes to Nick. Goodwin admitted that she genuinely broke down there, which is clear when we watch it back. Judy's emotional state could not sound more real. I was a horrible friend, and I hurt you, and you, and you can walk away knowing that you were right all along. I really am just a dumb bunny. Number 24, Billy Crystal's Monstrous Ad-Libs, Monsters, Inc. franchise. We know that Mike Wazowski's quick on his feet. We're rehearsing uh, a scene for the upcoming company play called uh, Put That Thing Back Where It Came From or So Help Me. <laughs> it's a musical. Yeah. Put that thing back where it came from or so help me. So help me, so help me, and cut. However, with comedy legend Billy Crystal leading the charge, you best believe there are enough hilarious unscripted moments to power up Monstropolis for at least a month. Indeed, Crystal shared that Mike is among his favorite characters to play because he could fully unleash his imagination and just experiment with the dialogue. Temperature is a balmy 65 degrees, which is good news for you reptiles, and it looks like it's gonna be a perfect day to maybe, hey, just lie in bed, sleep in, or simply work out that slab that's hanging over the bed! He also credited co-star John Goodman, who voices Sully, for being a great improv partner. Of course, this was no different for the sequel either. Given the hilarity of both films, we can't help but wonder what Crystal Adlibs didn't make the final cut. Using mainly spoons, we dig a tunnel under the city and release it into the wild. Spoons. That's it. I'm out of ideas. We're closed. Number 23, TTFN, Tata for Now, The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. The wonderful thing about Tiggers, and their voice actors, is how they've delighted generations of children with a character that simply In The Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh, the story behind the masterpiece, Tiggers voice actor Paul Winchell shared how he crafted the bouncy, trouncy character after seeing the illustrations. Step by step, everything from the character's distinctive lisp to his infectious laugh fell into place. Uh, there's a certain quality that I feel that I became 
identified with in my own mind so that instead of just reading the lines, I would always ad lib. I would always throw in something. Winchell felt such a strong bond with Tigger that he often chucked in some unscripted dialogue, including the memorable phrase, TTFN Tata for now, a line he attributed to his British wife. We have no doubt that there are Tigger fans out there who still love to shout the catchphrase before bouncing on their merry way. Well, I gotta go now. I got a lot of bouncing to do. <laughs> TTFN, ta-ta for now. <laughs> well, there goes Tigger. Number 22, Eating Lead and Ghosted by Jello, Monsters vs. Aliens. Hi, I'm Benzoate Ostlazine Bicarbonate, or you can call me Bob, <laughs> whichever's easier. Did I come on too strong? I'm sorry. Typically, voice actors are invited to record their lines separately. To an unseasoned improviser, this could prove quite challenging. However, it seems like a walk in the park in the talented hands of comedy giants like Seth Rogen, Hugh Laurie, Will Arnett, Rain Wilson, and more. When Colbert's President Hathaway discovers the alien's appetite for lead, he throws out this amusing quip. Wheels up, Papa Bear's on the move. Wait. So that's how you want to play it? Eat lead, alien robot! Evidently they eat lead. There's another great point where poor Bob gets snubbed by a plate of jello, and while receiving a fake number, even from a wobbly dessert, is heartbreaking. It gave Rogan an opening to come up with this hilarious line. I don't think your parents like me, and I think that jello gave me a fake phone number. This cast's comedic skills are out of this world and monstrously hilarious. Number 21. Seinfeld buzzes with improv, B-movie. Improvised dialogue seems inevitable when you have comedic extraordinaire Jerry Seinfeld buzzing around the recording studio. The comedian leaned into his stellar skill set and paved the way for his castmates to do the same. Remember when Vanessa convinces Barry to stay for coffee? Coffee? Well, uh, I don't want to put you oh, out unless you're no making anyway. Oh, it takes two minutes. Really? It's just coffee. I hate to impose. Don't be ridiculous. Actually, I would love a cup. We got this caffeinated scene from a rift exchange between the two actors. Needless to say, they brewed up something special. As Seinfeld told Rotten Tomatoes, it's off-the-cuff moments like these that made the script feel fresh. It's like your first album calling it your greatest hits. <laughs> Chris Rock, who voices Mooseblood the Mosquito, also got in on the improv act. His comedy made his small role a standout character. When it comes to improv, this cast is the bee's knees. Would you excuse me? My mosquito associate here will be able to help you. Sorry I'm late. He's a lawyer too? Ma'am, I was already a blood-sucking parasite. All I needed was a briefcase. Number 20. Sebastian's crabsolutely perfect ad-libs, The Little Mermaid. According to Samuel E. Wright, who voiced the crabulous crustacean, the filmmakers weren't initially too keen on him improvising. But they eventually had a change of heart and let him dive deeper into the comedic side of the character. Teenagers. <laughs> they think they know everything. You give them an inch, they swim all over you. Wright returned to the recording booth and spent roughly three hours channeling King Triton's right-hand crab and just letting loose. So they brought me in the studio and they just turned the mic on and I went nuts. I just said anything I wanted to say like Sebastian, I talked like him for three hours, and some of it found its way into the movie. Thankfully, parts of Wright's improv ended up in the film, creating some of the character's most iconic and hilarious lines. The line about teenagers was a particularly brilliant stroke of genius from the actor. Teenagers, they think they know everything. Give them an inch, they swim all over you. That was something I just made up, so I, you know what I mean? It's a good thing the creators didn't let this opportunity float away. Number 19. Who Does Wilbur's Dad Look Like? Meet the Robinsons. In this futuristic Disney flick, our protagonist, Lewis, meets Wilbur Robinson, a kid who claims to be from the future. All right, didn't want to pull rank on you, but you forced my hand. Special Agent Wilbur Robinson of the TCTF. The what? Time Continuum Task Force. I'm here to protect you. Later on, he also meets the rest of the Robinson family, except Wilbur's dad, Cornelius. So he inquires after the mysterious figure. Go on. Lucille is married to Bud and your dad, Cornelius, is their son. What does Cornelius look like? Tom Selleck. Okay. While it was scripted, Wilbur's response was originally just meant to be a placeholder that they expected to change. We can totally believe this, considering that Cornelius looks nothing like Tom Selleck. You don't look like a Lewis. You look more like a... Cornelius. 
I get that a lot. However, they ultimately decided to stick with the name drop and even hired the actor as a result, making this entry a bit different from the rest on this list. There's no denying Selleck's distinct voice is a welcome addition to the film, though. She's right. I'd just go with it if I were you. <laughs> and I am. Then you're absolutely right. It just goes to show that sometimes the most unexpected moments can have the best payoff. Number 18. A perfectly timed wisecrack, Beauty and the Beast. As Beast starts falling for Belle, he turns to his enchanted household companions for advice on winning her heart. You like it? It's wonderful. Then it's yours. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, would you look at that? <laughs> I knew it would work. Despite having spent quite a few years as a clock, it seems that Cogsworth's expertise in charming prospective love interests hasn't aged a tick. David Ogden Stiers, the voice behind the character, was a seasoned improviser who reportedly was encouraged to bring his talents into the recording booth. So when the Beast asks his consorts what kind gesture he might offer Belle, it's not just Cogsworth thinking on his cogs. I've never felt this way about anyone. I want to do something for her. But what? Stiers added on that last part of the line, turning it into a joke we're sure tons of parents appreciated. Well, there's the usual things, flowers, chocolates, promises you don't intend to keep. Number 17. King Julian likes to ad-lib ad-lib, Madagascar franchise. We could have said Z bravo to Chris Rock for his hilarious impromptu inputs as Marty. His ad-libs were making us laugh throughout the third installment. Really? However, we had to bow down to the master of improv, Sasha Baron Cohen, who voices King Julian. Before Cohen read for the role, the loony lemur only had a couple of lines, but that all changed after the actor came in and riffed in an accent for nearly 10 minutes. Your heinous comment will be stricken from the record. Does anyone else have the heebie-jeebies? No! Good! So shut up! In the skillful hands of the comedic icon, King Julian swung straight into our hearts with some of the funniest and kookiest lines. Incidentally, Cohen's improv skills wranglered him a larger-than-planned role in Luca. Little bits of it just float into your mouth. You can't stop it. You can't see it. So if you the mouth open, the whale carcass go in. Yes, yeah, good. I recommend it. He also led a musical performance that we're still bopping to today. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Yeah, I like to move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. I like to move it, move it. Yeah, I like to move it. Number 16, Bucky or Binky, Brother Bear. Yes, you and your friend Binky, I'm like, it's Bucky. So get it right. And they put it in. One of Disney's more underappreciated films, Brother Bear, features Joaquin Phoenix as Kenai, a young man turned into a bear as punishment for killing one in a fit of rage. He meets an orphaned bear cub called Coda, who he eventually takes under his paw. Okay, fine. If you can magically get me down, I'll go with you to this, this... Salmon ride. Whatever. But if you can't, you turn around, walk away, and never come back. Ever. It's a rocky journey at first, since the two mammals struggle to find common ground. During one scene, Phoenix flubbed his lines, calling a character named Bucky Binky instead. I don't care about, about the time you and Binky found, you know, the world's biggest pine cone ever. First of all, his name's Bucky, not Binky. Second, it wasn't a pine cone, it was a pine nut. And it was huge, even bigger than your fat head. Jeremy Suarez, who voiced the bear cub, didn't miss a beat in correcting his co-star and riffing off the mistake. I mean, I don't want to brag or nothing, but I got some moves. His quick wit was so brilliant and funny that it was left in the movie's final cut. Number 15. Morph Needs to Get the Map, Treasure Planet Another animated flick that doesn't get nearly enough love, Treasure Planet took the classic Treasure Island story and blasted off into space. It had a great premise, a phenomenal cast, and plenty of humor, but it ultimately fell under the radar. You listen to me, James Hawkins. You got the makings of greatness in you. But you gotta take the helm and charge your own course. Perhaps if audiences were aware of just how talented the voice cast is, things might have turned out differently. 
For instance, did you know that the scene where Silver and Jim try to convince Morph to bring them the map was actually totally made up by Brian Murray and Joseph Gordon-Levitt? Morph, bring it here. Morph, come here. Come here, come here, boy. Morph, over here. Come here, die. Come here, boy, come on, Morph. Come on. Morph, Morph, Morph. Talk about some real talent. Also, apparently, David Hyde Pierce, who voiced Dr. Doppler, came up with the line, Go Delbert, Go Delbert. All my life I've been waiting for an opportunity like this, and here it is, screaming. Go Delbert, Go Delbert, Go... Okay, okay, you're both grounded. Number 14, a tidal wave of improv, surfs up. The filmmakers snubbed animation conventions and had their actors record scenes together for this parody mockumentary. Typically, the directors provided a loose synopsis for any given scene, and the cast was encouraged to ride that improv wave the rest of the way. The idea was to make the dialogue sound as authentic as normal conversations. We did have those moments where we physically would like hold on to each other, the scene with Shy and Zoe, where I'm trying to push him, you know, we literally kind of reenacted this scene. When Shia LaBeouf arrived late for a recording session, his castmates were told to act as if his character was late for an interview. And it's like a big wave folding and crusting and crashing and just creating a lot of foam, like a, like a double latte with a shot of sugar-free vanilla. In a real testament to their chemistry and comedic chops, the scene ended up in the movie. Surf's Up is an underappreciated flick, but it's flippin' great. I'm gonna kiss her or what? What's going on? <laughs> Come on, Joe, we gotta go. Dude, you were saying you were in love no, with me. No, I didn't say All that. right, look, he really did Joe, you. <laughs> he liked you, though. <laughs> See ya! Number 13, Thank You For Nothing, How To Train Your Dragon. Thanks to its largely comedic cast, the directors were sure to leave plenty of room for improvisation here. And they're also extremely funny. And so we would bring them into the recording booth together and they would just riff on each other. Yeah, we rule! While there are a plethora of examples to choose from, we've decided to go with this one. Judas, what are you doing? We need her to like us! And now the spinning. Thank you for nothing, you useless reptile. Yep, a bit of on-the-spot comedy from Hiccup voice actor Jay Baruchel became one of the most iconic and quotable moments from the film, if not the entire franchise. It was even included for promotional purposes, so clearly they knew they'd struck gold. The sequel also has its fair share of memorable lines, such as during this strained encounter between Stoic and Valka. I pleaded so many times to stop the fighting to find another answer, but did any of you listen? This is why I never married. This and one other reason. Craig Ferguson as Gobber ad-libbed this entertaining moment that no doubt left the adults in the audience in stitches. Number 12, Rat Telenovela, Encanto. Encanto joins the ranks of animated film scripts with extra dialogue thanks to multiple great moments. Luisa actress Jessica Darrow went off script when she added an awesome cry of defeat. I hate you! Oh, I'm a loser! Outside of this moment, we also got a brilliant gag thought up by John Leguizamo. While his character Bruno lived out a solitary life, he had to get creative to stay entertained. This prompted him to cast his rat friends in an array of television shows that included at least one telenovela. Ooh, ooh, plus free entertainment. So what, what do you like? What do you like? You like sports? Game shows. Telenovelas. According to co-director and co-writer Sharice Castro-Smith, this was a Leguizamo original and one of her favorite jokes in the entire film. His brief synopsis is so engaging that we're already invested in the story and want to hear more. Their love could never be. I don't understand. Well, because she's his aunt and she has amnesia, so she can't remember that she's his aunt. It's like a... Number 11, The Tea Party, Alice in Wonderland. The Mad Hatter's Tea Party is one of the best scenes from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. It's also where we learned what an unbirthday is, and that you can't fix a watch with mustard. Birthday? <laughs> My dear child, this is not a birthday party. Of course not. <laughs> this is an unbirthday party. <laughs> However, did you know that Edwin, who voiced the Hatter, came up with most of the dialogue? Apparently, this scene resulted from Wynn and Jerry Colonna, who voiced the March Hare, just messing around while the recording equipment was still running. <laughs> My dear child, this is not a birthday party. Of course not, Billy. This 
It's another birthday party. Walt Disney himself apparently overheard their talks and insisted on putting their lines in the movie. It's such a memorably wacky interaction and so mad that it would certainly make the Hatter and Hare incredibly proud. Tea? Oh, I never thought of tea, of course. Tea. <laughs> Sugar, two spoons, just to Two spoons, thank you, yes. Damn, I forgot all about Chip. Number 10. Buzz has a meltdown. Toy Story. Tim Allen, who famously voices the space ranger known as Buzz Lightyear, was no stranger to ad-libbing during Toy Story's early days. Indeed, some of his most memorable lines weren't even in the original script. For example, sad, strange little man was entirely Allen's invention. You are a sad, strange little man, and you have my pity. Farewell. Oh yeah, well, good riddance, you loony! But one of his funniest bits of improv happens during the scene where Buzz finally comes to terms with what he really is. And let's just say he's not taking it well. Look at Wait, me, Buzz. I can't even fly out of a window. But the hat looked good, tell me the hat looked good. The apron is a bit much. Of course, Alan wasn't the only one flexing his ad-libbing chops. Remember that scene where Woody puts on a covert puppet show for his friends to convince them that Buzz is all right? Hey, look, it's Buzz! Hey, Buzz, let's show the guys our new secret best friend's handshake. Give me five, man. Something screwy here. So you see, we're friends now, guys, aren't we, Buzz? Well, credit goes to Mr. Tom Hanks for that one. Number 9. Improv Pandemonium – Kung Fu Panda Franchise If you look for any opportunity to yell out, Skadoosh! You have the creators of the Kung Fu Panda franchise to thank. After all, they're the ones who saw the creative potential in their cast, led by Jack Black, and encouraged them to deviate from the written word. Several cast members confirmed it was Improv Central in the recording studio, and the creative team was happy to let them wax lyrical to their heart's content. Executive producer Sean Nick Gagosian shared that James Hong, who provided the voice for Mr. Ping, would do, quote, things that just no one would ever think to come up with. It's just plain old noodle soup? You don't add some kind of special sauce or something? Don't have to. To make something special, you just have to believe it's special. Even Lucy Liu, who plays Master Viper, happily slid into the challenge of improv work. Mantis, this isn't about you. Poe is the one freaking out. I'm not freaking out. Poe. I'm freaking in. Number 8. Samantha, Frozen 2. In Frozen, it's Elsa who works her magic to bring Olaf to life. But behind the scenes, that honor belongs to Josh Gad. The actor recalled playing around with the dialogue and being genuinely surprised when this gem made it into the first movie. Yeah, I bet she's the nicest, gentlest, warmest person ever. Oh, look at that. I've been impaled. But that isn't the only Olaf classic line Gad's responsible for, either. When the snowman gets separated from his friends in the Enchanted Forest, he calls out to them. Although we consider ourselves pretty Disney-savvy, we didn't recall a Samantha being a part of the cast. Anna? Elsa? Sven? Samantha? <laughs> I don't know it's Samantha. It's a testament to Gad's comedic talents that such a simple ad-lib became so iconic that it was even featured on unofficial merch. This is an unscripted moment that's definitely worth melting for. Someday I will see that this makes sense. One day when I'm old and wise, I'll think back and realize that these were all completely normal events. <laughs> Number 7. A mega collection of examples. Mega Mind. When your cast is composed of Tina Fey, Will Ferrell, Jonah Hill, David Cross, and heck, even Brad Pitt, yes, he held his own. Who even needs a script, right? <laughs> oh, now that's the spirit! Perry! Fast! Perry again! Now it's time for some witty back and forth banter! You go first! Okay, we're not saying that Megamind is 100% unscripted, but director Tom McGrath estimates nearly half the dialogue was ad libbed with the script serving as a baseline for the cast's creativity. Faye and Farrell went against the usual animation routine by showing up at recording sessions together, allowing themselves to bounce off of one another. I lost my diffuser gun when I misplaced the invisible car the night you dumped me. Alone. In the rain. Did you ever look back? No! As we said, even Pitt proved he could engage in some off-the-cuff banter, which made it into the movie. 
It's a shame this film is so underrated because it boasts some mega talent. Justice is a non-corrosive metal. But metals can be melted by the heat of revenge. It's revenge and it's best served cold. But it can be easily reheated in the microwave of evil. Well, I think your warranty is about to expire. Number 6. Ogrewhelmingly Abundant Ad-Libs – Shrek one of DreamWorks' most beloved franchises, Shrek put a unique spin on the traditional fairy tale romance. With a talented cast that includes Mike Myers, Eddie Murphy, and Cameron Diaz, there was plenty of room for ad-libbing. And indeed, some of the most memorable lines were thought up on the spot. Whoa, 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 hold on now. Where did that come from? What? That. Back there, that was amazing! For instance, apparently Myers used this quote to chastise a director who was getting on his nerves. <laughs> All right, you're going the right way for a smack bottom. Incidentally, he used it again while playing Austin Powers the following year. Oh, you're going the right way for a smack bottom and I don't care who knows it! <laughs> but perhaps the most impressive is the fact that Fiona's burp was a total happy accident. Better out than in, I always say. <laughs> well, it's no way to behave in front of a princess. <laughs> Thanks. She's as nasty as you are. Diaz had been drinking a soda while recording her lines, and we guess the fizz got to her. Still, she didn't break character, prompting Murphy to improvise his reaction, too. Number 5. Lots of Improv – The Emperor's New Groove this underrated flick broke Disney's mold for elaborately planned films and became a breeding ground for improvisation instead. For example, Patrick Warburton made up Kronk's Mission Impossible-style theme song. Oh, he's doing his own theme music? Also, the entire squirrel running gag actually started as an inside joke among the creative team, but eventually made its way into the movie. Supposedly, David Spade ran amok with this creative freedom and often had to be reeled back in by the directors. He's very quick at improvising, and, and a certain portion of the time we've, we've just used what he's come up with. Perhaps most amusingly, though, was Eartha Kitt being genuinely taken aback by Yzma's kitty voice. Looking for this. Is that my voice? Is that my voice? Oh well. She was supposedly so surprised that she stopped mid-line to ask if that was really her. Clearly, the directors liked it, and the rest, as they say, is history. Number 4. A hell of a good improviser – Hercules The Disney-fied Hades is among the funniest animated villains of all time. This is largely thanks to James Woods' brilliantly unique, dry, and deadpan delivery of the God of the Underworld's lines. Hey, how you doing? Looking good. Nice dress. You audition for being in these movies. I guess everybody came in going, Hello, I'm Hades. And I, and I came in going, Hey, Hades, how you doing? Nice to see you. Nice face. Yeah. But did you know that this wasn't the original plan? The villainous deity was initially scripted as a serious character intended for Jack Nicholson, who eventually backed out of the movie. When Woods later took over the role, his breezy delivery was so good the character was rewritten for him. You know, I haven't been this choked up since I got a hunk of moussaka caught in my throat. Huh? So is this an audience or a mosaic? He was naturally also welcome to improvise. Not only did Woods shift the entire vibe of the film in a good way, but he created some of the film's most memorable moments. The actor called the role one of his, quote, personally cherished creations. You start to think, my gosh, you know, Hades could be like the Wicked Witch. My great, 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 great grandchildren will hear me doing Hades. My favorite part of the game. Number 3. Do the Hula, The Lion King In the lead-up to this animated feature's big climax, Simba and the gang find their path to Pride Rock blocked by a pack of hyenas. Simba tells his friends that they'll need to create a diversion, which does not go down too well with Timon. Come on, Timon, you guys have to create a diversion. What do you want me to do, dress and drag and do the Hula? Luau! If you're hungry for a hunk of fat and juicy meat, However, it does lead to one of the flick's funniest and most memorable moments. Without Nathan Lane's quick wit, we may have never enjoyed the sights of a meerkat performing a luau with backing vocals from a warthog. We just were on the floor in the booth yeah. it was, and, and immediately <laughs> said we can never use that in the movie. Um. <laughs> That's right. Lane ad-libbed the line that led to this moment of pure comedy gold. 
It became such an iconic scene that it was even called back to in The Lion King One and a Half. Let's just cut to the chase, shall we? Oh, sure. Ah! Number two, The Road to a Quotable Movie, The Road to El Dorado. Traditionally in animation, actors record their lines separately and the dialogues edited together later. It's gonna be tougher than I thought. Julio, relax. All you have to do is smile, act godly, and follow my lead. However, in this case, Kevin Klein and Kenneth Branagh shared a voice box so that they could easily riff off of one another and improv many of their lines together. Incidentally, this was an idea that was previously used by Burt Reynolds and Dom DeLuise in All Dogs Go to Heaven, who were also permitted to ad-lib. But back to El Dorado. We think we can all agree that the chemistry between Klein and Branagh is off the walls and they make an incredibly compelling duo. I am Miguel. And I am Tulio. And they call us Miguel and Tulio. Also, thanks to their impromptu dialogue, many of us probably tried to drop the word loquacious into as many conversations as possible. I will cut you to ribbons, fool. Such mediocrity. Let your sword do the talking. I will, it will be loquacious to a fault. It's moments like this that make this movie as precious as El Dorado's gold. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. So much of Genie's dialogue. Aladdin. It seems like someone at Aladdin stumbled upon a magic lamp and used two wishes to land two comedy giants in their cast. I don't think you quite realize what you got here. So why don't you just ruminate whilst I illuminate the possibilities? Firstly, there's the genius casting of Robin Williams. Co-director Ron Clements shared that Williams often strayed from what was on the page, apparently providing hours of off-the-cuff content and really helping shape the character we all know and love today. What we didn't expect was how much Robin was going to give us. Come on, kid. See? Gotta get the snakes, eh? Once Robin got in front of the mic, of course, all the celebrity impressions came out. Apparently, his antics would often leave animator Eric Goldberg in stitches. Credit should also be given to the late Gilbert Gottfried, whose comedic brilliance breathed life into the character of Iago. We gotta get out of here. We gotta get out. I gotta start packing, your highness. Only a century. We gotta travel light. Bring the guns, the weapons, the knives. And uh, how about this picture? I don't know. I think I'm making a weird face in it. Gottfried also shared that he was encouraged to improvise, and one such moment elicited a laugh from Williams, securing its place in the movie. You have been a fabulous audience. Tell you what, you're the best audience in the whole world. Take care of yourself. Good night, Alice. Good night, Agrabah. Adios, amigos. Have you heard of any other on-the-fly chatter left in an animated flick? Let us know in the comments. All right, you gotta write all that down, because I'm not gonna remember any of it, but here we go. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.